Hello everyone, I'm Father David Heeman, pastor of Holy Cross. Welcome to another installment of Catechism in a Nutshell. And uh, I just, the last two, I talked about the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I talked about how God reveals himself in the scriptures. But we also talked about the fact that he reveals himself in the living tradition of the church. Um, and uh, let me just turn to Thessalonians. Uh, Paul says, writes, So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now, the things that were written down in letters and also in the Gospels, they eventually became codified and put in the New Testament. That's the sacred scripture. We hold the Bible, the entire Bible, I talked about the Old Testament, New Testament, as the word of God. And Paul says, hold fast to the written traditions, but also hold fast to the spoken traditions. There was a lot of things going on that weren't necessarily written down, but we can see that they were kind of written down a little bit later by the church fathers. So there's a lot of things that were going on, a lot of religious practices, a lot of teachings that weren't necessarily, uh, we're not going to find in the Bible. For example, how the mass proceeded. I want to go to one of the most key texts that give us a really good picture of the most important parts of an early Mass. And this text, it's one of my favorite texts, because frankly, back in high school, some people were saying to me, oh, the, the Mass is just an invention of the Church back in the 1500s, you know, and the, the Mass is, you know, that wasn't what the way things were from the very start of the Church. Well, if you go back to the Church Fathers, you see that's actually the way they were. Uh, a guy by the name of Justin Martyr, yes, he died for his faith, he actually wrote down a little account of the Mass. And uh, this is how it goes. He wrote this down probably like between 148 and 155 AD. Now listen to the similarities here in the Mass that we celebrate today. On the day which is dedicated to the sun, all those who live in the cities or dwell in the countryside gather in a common meeting. And for as long as there is time, the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read. Then when the reader has finished, the president verbally gives a warning and appeal for the imitation of these good examples. Then we all rise together to offer prayers. And when our prayer is ended, bread is brought forward along with water and wine. And the president likewise gives, gives thanks to the best of his ability. And the people call out their assent saying, Amen. Then there is the distribution to each and participation in the Eucharistic elements, which are also sent home with the deacons to those who are absent. Those who are wealthy and wish to do so contribute whatever they themselves wish to give. The collection then goes to aid all in need. Wow, does that sound familiar or what? Let's go through this and identify some parts. Ready? I'm going to go through it again. And you try to f identify the parts with me. Ready? On the day which is dedicated to the sun. Well, that's Sunday. Okay, it's no longer Saturday as the main day. It's Sunday because, uh, as we hear in all sorts of readings, Sunday is the day that Christ rose from the dead and conquered all darkness. So Sunday is our kind of our new Sabbath, as it were. Uh, all those who live in the city or dwell in the countryside gather in a common meeting. Well, that's the church, right? It's not the building. It's the meeting of the people of God. Ecclesia, those who are called out. Uh, they're called together. And for as long as there is time, the memoirs of the apostles, what's that? What's well, the gospel? It's the New Testament books, writings. For as long as there is time, the New Testament is read. And, or, 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 or the writings of the prophets are read. Now, that's, of course, from the Old Testament. Then, when the reader, what's that? The lector, the person we know as a lector, has finished. The president, we're talking not politics here, we're talking the priest. The priest, the, the elder, the presbyter, then verbally gives a warning and appeal for the imitation of these good examples. That's the homily. Then, we all rise together to offer prayers. Well, that's our bidding prayers or our intercessions. And when our prayer is ended, bread is brought forward along with water and wine, the offertory. And the president, that is the priest, likewise gives thanks to the best of his ability. That's the Eucharistic prayer, giving thanks. And the people call out their assent saying, 
Amen. You know, when I go through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. That's the, the great doxology. That's the great amen. Then there is the distribution to each and participation in the Eucharistic elements, Holy Communion, which are also sent home with the deacons to those who are absent. That's the homebound ministry. Those who are wealthy and wish to do so contribute whatever they themselves wish to give. That's the offertory. That's been placed here and there at different points in the Mass. The collection then goes to aid all in need. That's acts of charity. So you can see that the two highlights, you know, the liturgy of the Word and the liturgy of the Eucharist are found in here with all the other subsequent things too and, and the preceding things. Um, th this is the Mass. I, I'll never forget um, after people were challenging me on this, I went into the St. Edmund Library and I, and I found this writing uh, and, and I, I read this. I remember walking through the St. Edmund Commons just kind of stunned with joy going, it's true. It's true. Everything we celebrate as Catholics, it was right there in the earliest of time. I mean, they didn't just start this in 148. This was something that was handed on, a tradition. Traditio means to hand on. This is something that was handed on to them. And I remember even uh, running into a, a wonderful friend of mine now who was thinking about becoming a Catholic. I shared this with her and, you know, and a couple other things. And guess what? She had some reservations. This, this convinced her. This convinces a lot of people about the historicity and the depth of what we celebrate in the Eucharist, which actually goes back to Jewish roots because you have, you have one temple. That's the, the, the place where they offer sacrifice, right? And then in, in the, the Holy Land, you had the various little towns and cities. They all had a little synagogue that they didn't offer sacrifice there, but they heard the word of God in the synagogue service. So you put the synagogue service, the word liturgy of the word, and you put the temple sacrifice together, you have what we have in today's mass. Did you notice that something was missing here? What was missing from this early mass? The creed. They didn't say the creed. They were believing it. They believed all the elements of the creed. But since those elements were being challenged, they got together in 325 in Nicaea, and they uh, got together and they put together the Nicene Creed. So I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and so forth. They put that whole creed together, and now we say that as a summary of things that was they were already being taught, but they needed to pull it together to make one nice symbol of faith, one nice proclamation of what we believe. So we summarize that every time as well. Wow. So... It's not just the written scriptures, it's the living tradition. This is an example, what I just read to you, and many, many more examples uh, that have actually been written down too. They're considered precious writings, patristics, early church father writings, and uh, very important writings. Um, but the truth is, uh, we're a living body of Christ, and, and from the body of Christ comes the written scriptures and also the living tradition based on the magisterium of the church where Jesus set up. So I think we're done now with the scriptures and tradition, and uh, we're going to move on now to a next topic. Okay, God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.